playing on the slab roller and I can still see the canvas marks and it's not being compressed so I'm going to gently compress it. Not only does it get rid of the marks, which you can leave on if you want to, but it's good for the clay to be compressed. It makes it less, it makes it stronger, less chance of warping. So do it in lots of different directions. This isn't the final shape. I've just made a blob, and then once I've done the marbling, I'm going to cut it to the shape that I like because I like the marbling. I want it to go to the edge of the, yeah. of, the of the piece. This is quite an important step. It also helps it not to warp, so you won't have so wonky a, a plane to it. This, once it's done, will be made to sit in a former, so it'll have a curve to it. So I've done that on both sides. The next thing I'm going to do is pour on the base slip. To make this effective, you do need a base slip on it so that the other slip can move. So I'm going to just pour on a white here catch it in this tray so eventually we'll be able to get it back into that bottle. Hopefully it will stay on the board. Worst case scenario it's just going to flop off. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for the worst case scenario. Yeah, it's always fun. Come on, cover. Come on. Okay, so I've got a nice wet surface. And I've got uh, a navy blue and a yellow here, so I'm going to do a bit of a design with these two. So I'll start off with a blue stripe. And I'll pop some yellow in there. The technical term for this is to joggle. <laughs> joggle. So I then get up my board and you can move it how you want. You can make it run so you get a marbling effect. So once this is fired, it will be the blue and the yellow. And it's knowing where you want it to run to and when you want it to stop. So I think I'm going to stop there. That's it. That's lovely. Isn't it? it is cool. effective, That's isn't great. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really good. And obviously yeah. you can still add oxides and That's underglazes fine. to this. Mm. So I'm going to let this go leather hard. Then I'm going to cut it to the shape that I want and place it in the former. Yeah. Um, mm. And to be honest, this is going to be the back of my plate because I'm then going to do something on the top to decorate it. So that's the marbling with the joggle. Mm. And in a similar vein, we'll do the same with this one, but this will be feathering. I've actually brought a real feather to do it, although you don't have to have a feather for this. Hello. We've just been marbling, Ooh, which is shaking nice. it around once you get the slips on. Do both sides for compressing. Have you seen Bruce? He's in the car park. Oh, I'll have to take you out there in a minute. I brought it in especially to show you. Okay, so again, I'll be pouring the base slip on, which will be the white. I put it near the edge of the board so that there's less wastage. need that wet background. Might just pop a bit more blue. So you have to be a little bit more uh, careful with the feathering because I'm wanting the lines to be fairly parallel. It's basically uh, the topping on a Bakewell tart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oops. I'm not putting the yellow on this one, I'll just stick with the two colours. I 
And traditionally, they call it feathering because they used a feather to then just run through. Let's pull the clay slip into each other to get that sort of look. Okay. Two very simple things to do with your slips. Oh, finished. Lovely. Right.